I'm Charlene Jorgensen and welcome to Quilting from the Heartland. Today we have a special guest that's going to show us some new hand quilting techniques. Never before on Quilting from the Heartland have we ever shown hand quilting, so this is really going to be a fun experience for me. And I would like to welcome Jean Brown, who is an expert in this field. Thank you, Shirley. Nice to be here with you. I first met Jean a couple of years ago in Bend, Oregon, and she was a teacher there at the same conference that I was at, and I had a half a day off, so I was able to <laughs> sit in on her class. And I was really impressed with her different techniques. The way I was taught, Jean, was that you work on a large floor frame, which took up the whole living room. Right. And the men just hated it when they come home in the evening because their <laughs> living room was gone. And you just use a small, you use your chair and what's sitting in your lap, and that's all you, all the space you have to take up, which was so amazing to me. And she does queen size quilts this way. So, Jean, I would like you to explain how you prepare your quilt top before you actually start to quilt. Okay, Charlene. Going back to the basting, mm -hmm. I like to use a basting technique that allows us to radiate the basting stitches from the center to all four corners and from the center to all four sides and once around the edge of the quilt, no matter what size it is, whether it's queen or king. For 28 years I've used this little frame and every stitch I've put on has been done on this frame. You know, I always did the cross hatching method. In fact, I still do. Mm -hmm. What is wrong? What is your opinion on that? On cross hatching, those stitches are going north, south, east and west and we're working on a curve. And mm -hmm. so when we move the curve around the quilt, it's beginning to bunch up around the edges. Okay. And so that defeats the purpose. Well, there's always more than one way to do everything, and I think next time I baste a quilt, I'm going to try it that way and see if, if you are actually right. <laughs> good, good. Okay. It works for me. <laughs> uh, what kind of batting do you like to use? I like a polyester low loft. My quilts are decorative. They're not utilitary. Okay. And so um, I like a little puffiness, and uh, I certainly like small stitches. And so with the light uh, polyester batting, I can get really nice small stitches. I agree with you on the batting. What about uh, fabric content in your quilts? Do you use all cotton exclusively? I try to use very good fabric. We put too much of our time and effort mm -hmm. in this, so we do need to use the very best fabrics. Would, would you say 100% cotton then? Is Absolutely. What you okay. Mm -hmm. and, and do you pre-wash? Okay. <laughs> okay. You pre-wash everything. Right. Um, do you want to explain to the viewers the tools that you're using for your technique? Yes, these are a little unusual, but they've certainly been popular and they've certainly worked well for me. I've been able to speed my hand quilting technique up uh, doing my queen and king size quilts in anything about 35 to 45 days. And so that's a big help. I can just do a lot of quilts in a very short time and they can be hand quilted. I'm going to use the deep recess thimble. Mm -hmm. I do like the thimble for the reason that it is deeply recessed, probably mm -hmm. the deepest recess on the market today. I not only put my needle in this deep recess, I also want to put my thumb in the recess okay. as I work along. That controls my needle dur during the quilting. Now, Aunt Becky. She is a real super little quilter for me. I call her my little quilting machine. I'm going to put Aunt Becky under the quilt. Mm -hmm. And when she comes out of the package, I kind of learned a long time ago to make it fit my finger. Mm -hmm. Remember the little cricket toys we used to mm -hmm. have when we were kids? Same idea. I'm going to pop the little Aunt Becky symbol forward just enough to get that curve. I'm going to bend the back side down just enough where it will stay on my fingers mm -hmm. without falling off. So now we're ready to go. Another thing I like to do with my quilts is in this frame, I like to loosen my fabric very loose. That's the, I, I couldn't get used to that in I your know. class. I thought, oh man, she doesn't have any tension no. on this at all. But you use that as your, instead of rocking the needle like I was taught right. to do, you 
balance your quilt up and down. Mm -hmm. And Aunt Becky does it for me. Mm -hmm. That's why I call her my little quilter. I usually measure about three to four inches here in my little portable lap frame. It's portable, it goes everywhere with me, and so I take my quilting with me everywhere. It gets done faster for that reason, what too. What about on your pointer finger, you've also got... I have the little rubber finger like the secretary's filing finger. Mm -hmm. It just speeds up the process by being able to pull that little short needle through very quickly. And let's show them the frame that we're working on. Okay. Which is also different than what you normally see. It is a... Uh, actually, your husband has made them yes, for years. Yes, he has. This is the little lap base, and it doesn't slide off because we put felt on the bottom. We use a larger lap base than some of these have uh -huh. in the past because with a heavy queen or king size quilt, you need good stability on your lap. And Another then you can position, turn it yes, easily. we do. We turn it on our lap. Uh, the other positioning too is for the knees to be quite level so that mm -hmm. it will hold it in a real good position for you. So sometimes you lift your feet a little bit. In my Lazy Boy chair, though, I'll just tuck the quilt right under the front mm -hmm. here, and it holds it in the right position for me. It is important, however, to keep the knees at a level position. Yes, to we hold certainly the don't frame. want it slanting down. Tipping. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about the needle? Well, uh, I use a small needle. I know many people love the 12, size mm -hmm. 12 quilting needle. This happens to be a size 10 quilting needle. I was going to say, this is not a 12. Right. This has got to right. be a 10. 10, it seems, makes it just a little easier to wind our, quickly wind mm -hmm. our knots on. Do you want to show us how you prepare your thread before you start uh, quilting? Yes, I will. She gets very serious about... <laughs> when I pull my thread off of the spool, of course, we always use it in one direction only. I mm -hmm. think most quilters know that. And that prevents a lot of knots and kinks in the thread. And so I will thread the eye of the needle and I make the quilter's knot, which is the circle. And then I take both ends, the needle, and lay the end of the thread on the needle. Now I'm going to take the loose thread here in the circle and wrap it three times, or four, depending mm -hmm. on the fabric. And I'm gonna hold the little wrap and push the needle through clear to the bottom. And there I have a little heart-shaped knot. And it makes it hard to pull through, but mm -hmm. it stays in better. That is the same knot that I learned. We Good. have one thing in Good. common. <laughs> and um, show them how many needles you have ready to go. Okay. Before I start a quilt, the evening before, uh, while watching television, mm -hmm. but I will thread up maybe 30 or 40 needles in my little container here. And there will be a lot of threads there. Mm -hmm. And I put the quilter's knot in and I'm ready to go. And this keeps my momentum going. Mm -hmm. I don't run out of thread. and have to stop and thread up again. Now, when I put my knot inside the, the quilt, we always bury our knot. So I'm going to run the knot inside, and I want to retain that tail. I don't cut it off. I find many of my students want to grab their scissors and uh -huh. chop it off. But what I like to do is just put my needle right in here and just swivel the needle real gently around, and it will come around, and it just disappears. I do that little swivel on the beginning as well as at the mm -hmm. end of my quilting. Uh, as we move the quilt around, the tail will become entangled with the batting and helps mm -hmm. hold the knot. Because you do move this quilt around a lot. Absolutely. You do not want... This is portable work. And I know you are a judge, and one of the things that you look for is whether they have knots on the top or the bottom of the oh, quilt. Oh, you really bet. a bad <laughs> score. Absolutely. Okay, now show the viewers and me how you're going to do this. I've had five minutes of practice, <laughs> so I want to warn you that I'm not going to be an expert at this. But by me doing things wrong, they will get some very good tips, I hope. Yes, and I think one of the problems maybe for you, Charlene, is that you have quilted before in the mm -hmm. traditional rocking method. I thought I was pretty good at it. You were very good. Your stitches are very good. But... Um, I, I want to learn this method because it's going to be a lot faster. It is faster. Yes. And it's comfortable. I don't want to move too much of mm -hmm. me. As we get older, sometimes we get some aches and pains, and we don't want to move too much of us. I don't move wrists either below the quilt or above. I no longer come out here and use my thumb to move the See, fabric. that's what I did. I rocked right. my needle all the time. Both of my grandmothers quilted that way.
Aunt Becky under the quilt here is just going to do everything for me. Okay. So I'm very pleased so with that. So you have a motion of your finger mm -hmm. underneath? Mm -hmm. Of okay. the Aunt Becky. Okay. There's Aunt Becky. Now a very unusual thing is I do loosen these to raise a lot of eyebrows. Because yes, usually we work with very tight fabric. But I'm going to lift the fabric up here, and when I put it on the frame, I usually measure a distance of about three to four inches right here in the center. Mm -hmm. That's just about the correct amount. Aunt Becky is going to come right up here. Now, most quilters pick their needle up on the side and start mm -hmm. to work. But as I said, I don't want to move anything. So I'd have to move my whole arm and shoulder mm -hmm. to be able to get my needle straight in for that first stitch. So instead of that, and this is not my... Uh, invention. I've seen many, many old-time quilters tripod the needle, mm -hmm. bringing these three fingers, the thumb and these two fingers, on top of the needle. At this point, I take my thumb and shove it over to the side mm -hmm. in this wonderful thimble. Now I'm going to reach down with that one other hand, finger and I'm going to bring that needle over and look, the needle is in perfect condition mm -hmm. for that first stitch. If any new quilter needs to know, we need to put that needle in each first stitch straight, straight in. in. That's yes. a tongue twister for me. But another little thing I will mention right here too, we get a gap in our stitching sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I have learned that we can l eliminate that gap if we only consider a half a stitch with each first, first stitch. stitch. Okay, uh -huh. that's a good point. So I'm going to measure a half a stitch in front of the thread that is showing in my fabric. Aunt Becky is going to lift and give me the tension okay. that I would not otherwise have. And then I'm going to lay the needle down as flat as I can. I'm going to push until the point of the needle shows. Remember where I said I'd put my thumb? Mm -hmm. Right on top of that needle as I shoved it over there. Mm -hmm. Excellent control and what a time saver. I have great control of that needle mm -hmm. with that thumb. If I get a big stitch I don't like, my thumb can bring it back and give me the stitch I want. Mm -hmm. Now first I'm going to show you very slowly, slow motion here. Aunt Becky moves back, way back for my students. I ask them to take it way back. Do you see the needle mm -hmm. drop down all by itself with the fabric? Now when I bring Aunt Becky forward, right here it's lifting the needle mm -hmm. for me. And so that's when I'm going to catch another stitch and Aunt Becky moves. Do you notice the thimble is not moving except to go forward? And your hand's not rocking. And my hand is not moving either. I don't move anything. Mm -hmm. I hear moving parts wear out too fast. <laughs> okay. That's the slow motion, and I'm going to pull that through. Now, the first thing I would do would be to stab the needle close mm -hmm. to my work again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tripod right away, and here we go, right here. And I'm going to push the needle over to that side again, mm -hmm. pick it up. Now, I'm going to show you just a little faster, if this works for me. Half a stitch for each first stitch, and the needle going straight in, right? Mm -hmm. Now people say, I like my finger under there so I can s tell where the point of the needle is. Mm -hmm. I don't want my finger under there. It would stick it. So here is Aunt Becky, and metal is touching metal, and mm -hmm. I know right where it is. Down again for that first stitch. Now Aunt Becky can come up here and work real close to the point of the needle for me, and I get beautiful, even stitches very quickly. The other thing that you do that I wasn't taught was you load your needle completely to the end. I know. That's bad, isn't it? <laughs> no, actually it's very smart. <laughs> Even with using my rubber finger here ready to pull that little short needle through, I can't get a hold mm -hmm. of it. And so I'm going to dip the needle down and back and just with a fingernail or my finger mm -hmm. underneath the quilt, I gather the fabric on just enough to be able to pull it right on through and stab near our work. Now by taking that half a stitch back there where I needed to, there's more pull put mm -hmm. on the back stitch because it's straightening out and putting a pull there. Now how tight do you pull your thread? I don't pull it tight. You I don't. would like it just to lay in the fabric. So <laughs> you don't snug it up so it no. actually ripples? No. We get beautiful little shadowed uh, um, quilting by not mm -hmm. pulling it tight. Now I notice on the quilt that you're working on, you have absolutely no marks to follow at all. Do you want to explain what you're doing with okay. that? Okay. With Hawaiian quilts, it's wonderful. 
because the Hawaiian people just do it very free form. And I've been working with some Hawaiian quilts the last few years. Mm -hmm. And I learned that in Hawaii, when I did a study on the Hawaiian quilts, so I would know more about the Hawaiian quilts, they always used a finger, the width of one of their fingers, or their thumb if they wanted a nice wide row. Mm -hmm. And so it made it just real easy, and we don't have to mark it. Now, she has done, I don't know how many blocks that you've got here, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. There's four large blocks in this one. And, of course, there were nine of the same size in this one, which made a huge king-size quilt. Okay. Well, we won't get into the Hawaiian quilting, but I wanted to show them how you do this without any marks. Now, I have marks on mine. Okay. And I'm going to try what you just showed us how to do. Okay, I'd like to see you try it. <laughs> okay. Now, like I said, I'm used to rocking the I needle, know. so I, know. I am going to stab my needle. I've done that part right. Correct. And I have the tripod. Perfect position. Okay. Yes. Uh huh. Maybe I can do this. Remember to keep Aunt Becky very busy. And straight up and mm -hmm. down. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tip it to the side. Right. And push forward. Uh huh. And and let Aunt Becky go to work right there. Very good. Look at that. I am rocking my hand a little bit, I feel. Yes, you can work on that and practice it. My stitches aren't even. You'll work on that, too. I tell my students not to uh, worry about uh, I don't think the that looks too good as far as even stitches, but I did get the method down. That's right. You sure did. And you will practice and learn not to move your hand at all. What Do you stab every time you start a new every set of... Every time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, away from your work. A little bit, yes. And then do the tripod. Uh-huh. And then come back and a half a stitch. That's correct. R lay it down. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you not to move this hand at all. Okay. Just let Aunt Becky go to work for you. She'll do all your work for you. Oh, that's looking a lot better. That Whoops. looks good. Now I have a long stitch so I can come back. You can because that thumb is right there ready to control your needle. Doesn't that make it convenient? Yeah, I like that. I think with a little bit of practice, maybe mm -hmm. an hour or so, I'd be ready to rock maybe and Maybe less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very comfortable. But I think your point about keeping your knees mm -hmm. flat, yes. that was a very good yes. tip. And I learned something from a very famous quilting teacher many years ago, if we keep our shoulders level and totally relaxed at all mm -hmm. times, we're very comfortable. Because even sewing at your sewing machine, you know, you can get some pinches and tightness in your neck. And for the same reason, this works so well. Keeps you very comfortable. Now, if you were invited to a quilting bee and they had a big quilt on a floor frame like I was taught to quilt on, right. would you be able to use this technique with that? Yes, you can. And you can use the Aunt Becky. The thing is that the Aunt Becky will turn in the direction your needle needs it. And okay. you can work on a large stationary quilt that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Jean, I'm going to ask you to quilt uh, one of the quilts that we had earlier in our series oh. with the applique roses. And I want you to turn and look at the quilt and tell okay. me what you plan to do with this okay. quilt. First thing I would say was what would you plan to do with it? Because we always like to, to do it the way we would like to uh -huh. see it. I can make suggestions, and then if you liked it, then we would work with that. Well, I thought... In the beginning, I'd like to see the petals of the flowers outlined. Beautiful, yes. Right in the ditch along. You're right, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what would you do along the vine along the outside edge? Uh, we might bring in another pattern that will connect with the border itself underneath the vine. Not would it be feathers or cross hatching or what would you suggest? It could be any of those. It could be simple lines. It could be diagonal lines. It could be a pattern that we'd like to work on. I used a template on another quilt that I did, and, and we did a feather pattern that laid mm -hmm. right in under the vine, and it worked very well. So feathers would work in this uh, quilt if we let the ivy go. Would you actually quilt over the ivy, or would no. you skip under it where no. the feathers went? You want to make the vine and the leaves look like they're laying on the top, okay. so we'll go in under. What about thread col colored? How do you feel about that? Now, in the past, I've used contrasting thread. How do you feel about that? 
I like to use a single color thread and I always look at the back of the quilt before I make that decision because okay. that's where it's going to look different and unusual. Okay. So a beautiful um, off-white would be be natural color thread. So you don't switch thread color throughout your project? No, because of what it looks like on the back. <laughs> See, that's where we are a little bit different. But mm -hmm. the neat thing mm -hmm. is that there's room for all of the different ideas. Everybody's ideas, that's right. You also mentioned in the beginning that you put your binding on mm -hmm. the top layer of your quilt before you ever start basting it. Yes, if you send this home with me and I'm going to quilt it for you, I will ask you to let me put the binding on first or if you want to put it on first. Okay. I do that for several different reasons because we are working portably. It allows the protection of the edge of the quilt. Mm -hmm. There's no stretching or fraying or little seams popping loose if it has the binding already sewn on. It definitely protects the edge. Yes, absolutely, as we move it around. Now this is a very wide and unusual uh, binding uh, because it is a different style being the Hawaiian quilt. But you see, I do put the binding right on the quilt top first. So when I finish my quilt top, it is stitched right on. I'll make okay. the binding and put it on. Now, I always use a two inch binding. Will yes. this be trimmed down? Uh, well, no, most of my bindings are two and a half or three inches really? wide. Really? Mm -hmm. And of course, ironed in half to give it the double. Well, let now, me tell you what happened to me. I okay. did a wider binding and sent it off to be judged, and everything was fine in my quilt until they came to the binding, and they said, you did very well in all scores, except your binding is too wide. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I guess maybe that varies with the judge then. I think so. Uh, that also brings out one other point, that when we have the binding on, it is cross-grain. Right, because okay. we do it on a bias. Mm -hmm. It's also doubled. I iron it in half, and it also catches right here in the edge of my frame, okay. allowing me to work on my borders, and it really holds very well right there. And then we always work borders from the center of the border and quilt toward that Towards corner the, uh, okay. and then back to the center, and that helps to keep the quilt moving in the right direction. Jean, I want to thank you so much for all of your tips that you've shared with Great. us today. I know that the viewers are going to be very happy with this program. Stay with us because Linda Taylor has more machine quilting tips to share with us at the end of the program. Today Linda Taylor is going to show us how to make feathers on the Gamel quilting machine. The feathers are done freehand, Charlene, and they are simpler than they look. Let's start by just making one here. I'm going to go down and get my thread using the security stitch here that does a complete stitch. I'm going to take two or three little stitches. And the first thing I'm going to do with the feather is make a stem so that I know where the feather is supposed to be. And this you could be border or along the edge of wherever you wanted to put it. So here's my stem. And at the end of the stem I'm going to put almost a teardrop looking okay. figure there. And now, if you think of half hearts as you're coming down, half heart, half heart. You see how easy that is? You have to make them round to the top and then you follow the stem. By following the stem, it sets you up actually for the next feather. We get down here to the bottom. I'm going to go back up that stem. And again, notice that I have a very loose grip on the machine. I'm not gripping it tightly. And I'm coming down, making that half heart shape again on the way down. Wow. I, w I thought maybe you had a, a pattern or something that you followed. You can certainly that. follow a template, but there's many, many times that you want to put a feather in a place that you would you wouldn't have the right size of a template, or it's just much easier and faster, and certainly more artistic to do it yourself. Now, what do you call this design? Those I just sort of made the end of the feather just so it looked like it was wrapped oh, up okay. like that. And then, if I wanted to continue, I could continue by doing some echoing on this feather. And that would just kind of complete the feather and make it look even prettier. Wow, that all the way does around add there. a lot. Isn't that pretty? So that's how you do, that's how you do your basic feathering design. And so many of our quilts need this on the outside oh, edge. Oh, and they're so beautiful. 
They're so and again, useful. if you did this on a whole cloth, a variegated thread would be perfect. Perfect. Yes. Thank you so much, Linda, for sharing this today with us. And join us next week when we show you how to do the apple core quilt. To receive Char's book of quilting ideas and tips from this series, call 1-800-637-2541 or send $15.99 plus $3.20 shipping and handling to Quilting from the Heartland, Book 1000, Box 610, Starbuck, Minnesota 56381. Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and American Express accepted. You can visit us on the internet at the address shown on your screen. Thanks for joining us, and please join Char next week for more Quilting from the Heartland.